All right, but for more on the latest market moves and for what to watch as we approach a big week of earnings, let's welcome in Zachary Hill, Horizon Investments Head of Portfolio Strategy. Zach, I want to start with where we're at right now with the market. Julie and I were just talking. Close to record highs in the S&P 500, close to record highs in the NASDAQ. Big week next week, a lot of eco data coming out. You have big tech earnings. What do you think is going to drive the market over the next week or two here? Yeah, I mean, the next two weeks are like the Super Bowl um, for investors, just one after another after another. So, I mean, you know, next week we get five of the seven MAG7 names reporting. Um, that's obviously a huge deal, uh, not just for the NASDAQ uh, and related indices, but also for the S&P 500, just given how large they are. Um, and that kind of debate back and forth between, um, you know, are we going to get a more cyclical kind of rebound because the economy is stronger or you know, more of that kind of defensive growth trade? Um, um, that we've seen really over the last 18 months. You know, couple that with um, all of the jobs data we get next week. So obviously we get non-farm payrolls on Friday, but then also the JOLTS report, you know, is one that the Fed has, has looked to as something that's that's very important for assessing overall health of the labor market. So, you know, those are, and we get the first cut of GDP um, for Q3, which admittedly is backward looking. Investors don't really care that much about that. Um, I think the jobs numbers are much more important, but really quite a lot of data next week. And we're not even talking about what's occurring uh, the week following. Yeah, the, you mean that thing on November 5th that we're looking ahead to? Is that yeah, what that you're thing. referring to, Zach? Okay, well, put, it, put all this together then. Do you think that stocks continue to be able to rise in the face of all that stuff? Yeah, we do by and large. I mean, we've, we've really repriced interest rate expectations over the last month, month and a half, really since the um, the 50 basis point cut that, that got everything going in September. Um, and there's a lot of reasons to worry, you know, rates are higher, what about political uncertainty, all this sort of thing. And really when we cut through a lot of that noise, we focus on the primarily on the health of the underlying economy because that's gonna drive earnings and ultimately that's gonna dictate, um, you know, the path for risk assets. And we still see that broadly speaking as being something that's that's very supportive i mean i think we saw a little bit of a trough um and some of that labor data and that's you know what was driving defensives to outperform in q3 and driving interest rates to fall um, and we've reversed a good bit of that um you know that path in, in the last few weeks and we do think that makes you know more sense to for stocks to work their way higher now what happens over the next two weeks is obviously going to depend on all that stuff we talked about before so that's a little bit of a a more uh, you know it's, it's a harder call to make. Zach, you uh, mentioned into the end of the year and, and through next year, yes, we continue to see broad upside for, for equities. And, and you mentioned rates moving higher there. I think the 10 years added about 50 basis points since the, uh, since the Fed enacted that interest rate cut. It's really ch chugged higher along with also the economic surprise index. I was looking at a chart, looking at both of these, right? And it's been better than expected economic data it seems perhaps at least somewhat contributing to what's driving yields higher. I guess as an investor, what's the takeaway from that? If economic growth is what's driving yields higher, does that not make it a headwind for stocks? Or at some point, are we still talking about a higher tenure potentially being a headwind for equities? Yeah, I mean, I think there are two things that matter, multiple things that matter. I mean, one is obviously the level of rates is going to impact um, long term discounts. Um, you know, so that's going to have a discount factor impact on, on how you value equities and what the multiple fair value multiple should be. Um, you know, but the other thing I think is probably more important and gets lost in this conversation is why are interest rates moving? If rates are moving down because the Fed has got to cut more because we're going into a recession, that's not good for equity markets, even though policy is going to be easier. Conversely, if interest rates are going up because um, eco economic growth is stronger and we can live with higher interest rates, the economy's steady state is just a little bit higher than it was in the 2010s period, which certainly is the way that, that we lean in terms of how we're thinking about rates, then that's not a bad thing for, for equity markets. That's actually quite a good um, overall environment. I mean, a lot of the 90s were, were characterized by environments that look a whole lot like that. Um, so those are, those are um, you know, some nuance around rates. I mean, the last thing and some of the, you know, maybe this last week, um, there's been a lot of talk about fiscal sustainability within the U.S., almost, you know, regardless of what happens um, after the election. And so, you know, that, that is a type of scenario where you have rates up for kind of the wrong reasons. And, and broadly speaking, we wouldn't expect equity markets to react well to that. If you need higher risk premia, you know, for U.S. debt, um, well, that just, you know, stands to reason that um, you're going to pay less, um, you know, for U.S. and other equities in that, in that type of a world. So um, that's something that we're watching. It's also been 
people have been talking about, you know, the U.S. fiscal sustainability situation, um, you know, over my entire career, and it has never really mattered outside right. of um, just a few, you know, isolated instances. That you know, yeah, out. lots of people like to say it's going to matter at some point when it does, but you're right, it hasn't yet. Um, you mentioned that people have been sort of now rotating back out of defensives, and I know you like growth here. Obviously, Mag Seven's part of growth, but why do you still like growth here? And is it going to be earnings that are going to be the next catalyst for that group? Yeah, earnings are really important. Um, you know, obviously to continue to, to beat and raise, especially for the you know very high expectation semi companies um, that are involved in the AI theme is something that's that's really important. So, you know, watching the hyperscalers next week and what their capex plans are uh, is going to be really key for that part of the AI trade. But really, you know, since um, the you know, kind of June, July period, we've seen, you know, some growth leadership uh, kind of downshift into a little bit of a, a different kind of environment, a broadening out, so to speak, of the AI theme. So not just the the picks and shovels um, chip producers, but, you know, some of the hardware and software enable companies, um, cloud services providers, that type of thing. We we broadly view that as, as a healthy development for the overall theme. And we do think, you know, the, the scope and the impact of AI on the economy is still very early in innings. And so um, don't give up on U.S. growth kind of no matter what this earnings season looked like, but it may be a little bit of a different kind of market environment than we saw over the last uh, 12 or 18 months. Zach, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you.